Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said that I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Satan is called an angel of light, but his kingdom is a kingdom of darkness. And darkness is merely the absence of light. Turn your King James Bible to the book of Psalms, and we're going to read from chapter 58. Verse 1. Do ye indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do ye judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? Yea, in heart ye work wickedness. Ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. You know, <laughs> I find it interesting. You could take a little tiny kid and you say, don't touch the cookies in the cookie jar until after dinner. And then you notice one of the cookies is missing. And you say, did you take one of those cookies? No. And they could have chocolate, you know, from the cookies smeared all over their face and hands. And they'll, they'll lie to you. Did anybody teach those kids to lie? No. They are, uh, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. And that was me, people. I'm speaking from experience about the, uh, you know, I didn't take that cookie from the cookie jar. Verse 4, their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. And uh, from what I understand, snakes are deaf. They can't hear. They can feel vibrations, but they don't hear. But here it's called a deaf adder, as in, I can't hear you. But there's also a deaf adder, D-E-A-T-H, because if you get bit by one of those things, chances are you're going to kick the bucket. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear, which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. Break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Wow. Break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O Lord. So what's this deal about breaking the teeth of lions? Isn't Jesus called the Lion of the tribe of Judah? Well, yeah, he is, but uh, let's see. Why are we talking about lions? In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, we read, Be sober. That's some good advice. Be sober. Be vigilant. That means pay attention to your surroundings and what's going on. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. See, Satan is like a roaring lion, walks about seeking who he can devour. In Ezekiel chapter 22 in verse 25, we read, There is a conspiracy. Ooh, don't, doesn't the media say that if you believe in conspiracies that you're a conspiracy nut? Well, the Bible speaks about conspiracy. So I guess conspiracy is true, huh? There is a conspiracy of her prophets 
in the midst thereof. Now there's two kinds of prophets. There's true prophets and then there's false prophets. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like, like a roaring lion ravening the prey. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. I found an interesting verse in Psalms 91 and verse 13. Now, this is speaking of people that are obedient in Christ. Well, it's Old Testament, but it says, Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Hmm. And, of course, the dragon is that old serpent. The dragon is called the devil and Satan. All right, let's go back to Psalms 58, <clears throat> verse 6. Okay. Break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O Lord. Let them melt away as waters which run continually when he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrows. Let them be as cut in pieces. Isn't that interesting? Cut in pieces. That's a Bible term. You ever heard that? In, uh, well, like in a war movie? Oh, they were cut, cut in pieces. Cut to pieces. There's a lot of words that, uh, sayings that come from the Bible. A little birdie told me comes from the Bible. Verse 8, As a snail which melteth, let every one of them pass away like the untimely birth of a woman, that they may not see the sun. Before your pots can feel the thorns, he shall take them away as with a whirlwind, both living and in his wrath. The righteous, the righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked, so that a man shall say, Verily there is a reward. Verily there is a reward for the righteous. Verily he is a God that judgeth in the earth. People, let me tell you something. The world is getting even ever so more wicked. There's even a cannibal restaurant in Los Angeles. Where do they get their, um, who's the supplier of their meat? I don't know. But I suspect if you looked at their supplier, it would probably be abortion clinics but uh, they claim that uh, Chelsea Clinton is one of their uh, customers or clients I guess you could say there's a disease called Kuru um, if when it happens in cows they call it mad cow disease and uh, they first discovered this in New Guinea, where people were the, the natives, the dark-skinned natives, very dark-skinned natives, were headhunters and cannibals. And when you ate the brains of an infected person with kuru, it was passed to whoever cannibalized their stuff. Now, in England they were having mad cow disease. And no, the cows were not angry because they were going to the slaughterhouse to become steaks, dinners for, you know, the wealthy people. Uh, in the United States, we don't have mad cow disease. Why? 
because it takes a certain amount of time for the disease to develop. And what they do is they slaughter the cows before the disease has the full time to develop. Therefore, they could say, oh, well, we don't have mad cow disease here. And besides, they call it something different. I forget what. Um, you know, just because you call something different, you know, uh, if somebody got shot with a bullet, and instead of a, calling it a bullet, you called it a um, zippity doodah. Oh, he got shot with a zippity doodah. Well, guess what? He still got shot. I, I don't care if you call it a bullet or a zippity doodah. He got shot. I mean, just because you change the name of mad cow disease doesn't mean it's not mad cow disease. So, but Kuru, it's funny, uh, Hillary was uh, exhibiting symptoms of Kuru. I wonder if she was one of the diners at the Cannibal Restaurant. I don't know. It's called the Cannibal Club. Look it up. They got a website. I thought it was a joke at first, but uh, they're not joking. They really aren't. God says your sin will find you out. I once heard a something. It says, what do you get when you cross a lawyer with a demon from hell? Chelsea Clinton. Never mind. The wicked shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Let me tell you something, people. Things are going to get really, really bad. Christians are being persecuted and murdered all across the globe. And things are getting, the uh, the pot is getting ready to boil. There's the little tiny bubbles. You know how you boil water? The little tiny bubbles start forming on the bottom. But it's not quite boiling yet. Well, that's where we're at in the world today. Christians are going to be openly hunted down. Mark my words. Bob Bob said it. Bob's sort of kind of giving you a prophecy, but it's not my prophecy. It's the word of the Lord. You don't believe me? Let's look it up. Okay, John 15:18. Jesus speaking, if the world hate you, and the world does hate you, people, if the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Luke 21, 17, Jesus speaking, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Matthew 10, 22, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. And guess what name Jews hate? They hate the name Jesus. You know, that's why they change, they, they do this Yeshua stuff, because you know what? An unbelieving Antichrist Jew, he's not offended when you say Yeshua. He's not offended in the least. But you say the name Jesus, which is the Greek rendering of the name in the Greek New Testament. Boy, they hate that name. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. And people will tell you, oh, well, that's lordship salvation. You have to earn your salvation by being obedient unto the end. Well, if you have faith, won't you be have faith in the beginning and the same faith in the end? Well, come on. Romans 8.36, As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. In John 16, 2, Jesus speaking, They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you 
will think that he doeth God service. All right, let's take a look at Matthew 24, the classic end times chapter. Verse 1, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. I've said it before and I'll say it again. When the Jews tell you that the Wailing Wall was part of the temple, they're calling Jesus a liar. Jesus said, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So either Jesus is a liar or the Jews are in error. And personally, I say the Jews are in error. I don't, I don't know. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. So there's going to be shortages of food, disease, earthquakes in very, uh, many places. That's what divers means. Divers doesn't mean a bunch of people doing scuba work in the ocean. No. That's where we get the word diverse. It means many. And you know what? If the Lord warns you that there's going to be famines, it's a good idea to put away a little something for a rainy day, don't you think? Verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended. Why? Why are they going to be offended? Because they're going to say, oh, wait a minute. Uh, what, you're, you, you mean I'm going to get killed for, my, for Jesus? I didn't sign up for this. Why, Benny Hinn told me to make a, uh, and Kenneth Copeland said, hey, make a positive confession. Oh, I'm going to be rich. I have faith that I'm going to be rich. Uh, Bless a Jesus, a God, uh, yes, uh, pay uh, your tithe, and a uh, God will uh, bless uh, you a hundred times. Uh, uh, praise a uh, Jesus. Yeah. And then many shall be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. You want to see false, false prophets? Turn on TBN. Turn on the 700 prophets of Baal Club. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. All right, let's go read a Psalm of David, chapter 140. Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent men, which imagine mischiefs in their heart continually. Are they gathered together for war? They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips, say law. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who have purposed to overthrow my goings. The proud have hid a snare for me. What's a snare? You ever heard of a snare? Uh, it's, it's a type of a trap.
The proud have hit a snare for me and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set gins for me. Selah. I said unto the Lord, Thou art my God. Hear the voice of my supplications, O Lord. O God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation. Thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. Grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Further not his wicked device, lest they exalt themselves. Selah. As for the head of those that compassed me about, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Let burning coals, let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into deep pits, that they rise not up again. Boy, that's going to come true one day. You know, there's actually people that say that there is no hell. That it's just, oh, well, you know, your body gets put in the ground and you go to sleep just like you go to sleep and that's it. There's no hell. Well, you know what? Jesus said there was a hell, but there's people, they just don't believe Jesus, So, which is fine with me. Verse 11, let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the, of the afflicted and the right of the poor. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. All right, let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 23. Uh, the Proverbs are generally accredited to King Solomon, who the Bible says was the wisest man that ever lived. Makes you wonder, being that he had all those wives and concubines. I mean, who can take care of 300 and something and 700 concubines? I mean, that's a thousand, thousand different women. I... Eesh. I mean, some guys consider that a fantasy. Me, do you do you really want, uh, would you want over 100 women yapping in your ear, telling you everything you're doing wrong, that they want it done a different way? I, no thanks. You know, well, well let me explain something. A good godly woman with spiritual discernment can help a man from falling into a ditch. Trust me. Trust me on that. All right, so that's not a knock against women, but uh, Mormons think multiple wives is a great thing, but uh, I don't necessarily think so. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee, and put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Labor not to be rich. You know, the love of money is the root of all evil. You know, what are you going to, you going to search, you're going to labor for the riches of Christ, or are you going to labor for the riches of this world? And let me tell you something, people. I used to be a volunteer chaplain at the South Florida Veterans Cemetery, and i never seen a hearse or a casket with a trailer behind it with all the worldly goods of the dead. Yeah, because Job said, naked came I. Well, let's see what Job said. Well, let's take a look. Job chapter 121. Job chapter 1, verse 21. And said, naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You come in this world with nothing, and when you leave this world, you're not going to take nothing with you. And any riches that you have better be waiting in the closet in your mansion in heaven in Christ. Because that's all you're going to have. 
In John 14, starting in verse 1, Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. In Matthew chapter 6, in verse 20, Jesus said, But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. That's what we need to be looking for, our treasures in heaven. All right. Proverbs 23, verse 4. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings, they fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. For he thinketh, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The morsel which thou hast eaten shall thou vomit up. The morsel which thou hast eaten shall thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Remove not the old landmark. Do you know what a landmark is? You know, when you own a piece of property, people do a, a survey and it shows you the, the boundaries of the property. Well, that's what it's talking about. You don't remove the old landmark. You don't go uh, taking the landmarks of your neighbor's property and your property and then moving it so that you enlarge your borders. It's not yours to take. That's theft. Remove not the old landmark and enter not into the fields of the fatherless. Hmm. You know, it was rough back in the old days when, you know, a mother had to take care of a child by herself. You don't want to go, you didn't want to go into the fields of the fatherless because they're probably having just barely enough to eat. And you're going to take what little they have and God's going to bless you? Uh-uh. Remove not the old landmark and enter not into the field of the fatherless, for their Redeemer is mighty. Their Redeemer is mighty. He shall plead their cause with thee. Apply thine heart unto instruction and thine ears to the words of knowledge. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with a rod, he shall not die. And we're not talking about you know, we're talking about a spanking, a whipping. You know, you beat a child's butt with a whip. I mean, a, not a whip, but a, a belt. Okay? I mean, unless you're really, really cr crazy, they're not going to die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. Now, I'll tell you what, people, when I was in elementary school, we used to get the Board of Education. And I'm not talking about members of a board that get elected every so often. I'm talking about the a paddle. I got paddled many a times, and I'll tell you what, I, I deserved every single one of them. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. My son, if thine heart be wise... My heart shall rejoice, even mine. Yea, my reign shall rejoice when thy lips speak right things. Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. For surely there is an end, and expectation, and thine expect, expectation shall not be cut off. Hear thou, my son, and be wise, and guide thine heart in 
the way. Be not among wine bibbers. Wine bibbers is, you know, drunks, right? Be not among wine bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh. In other words, don't be a drunken, gluttonous pig. <laughs> For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. Buy the truth, and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. The father of the righteous shall re greatly rejoice, and he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad, and she that bear thee shall rejoice. My son, give me thine heart, and let thine eyes observe my ways. For a whore is a deep ditch. For a whore is a deep ditch. And a strange woman is a narrow pit. She also lieth in wait as for a prey, and increaseth the transgressors among men. You know, usually when you're traveling down a road, there's usually a ditch on both sides of that road. And that's what a whore is. I'm an, uh, an expert on that, too. Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? Who has woe, sorrow, contentions, babblings, can't speak straight, you know, slurring a speech? Who hath wounds without cause? Why do they have wounds? Uh, because they're, they're, they don't eat right and their, their skin just breaks open because it doesn't have proper nutrition. Who has redness of eyes? You ever seen somebody with bloodshot eyes? Verse 30, the answer. They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. At the last, it biteth like a serpent. At the last, it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Thine eye shall behold strange woman and thine heart shall utter perverse things. You know, people that go to the bars and have a number of drinks, your eyes, a man's eyes will behold a strange woman and your the heart shall utter perverse things. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lieth upon the top of a mast. They have stricken me. Shalt thou say, and I was not sick? They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. Well, I guess this is going to be the end of part four of Serpents in the Bible. Hopefully I'll get done with this series. We're getting there. People, stay close to Jesus. Things are going to get rough. I have I just can't believe the changes I've seen in the United States in my lifetime. I'm in my early 60s, people, and I just can't believe that there is such a thing as the Cannibal Club. Look it up. Look it up. I mean, somebody first showed me that. I thought it was a joke. But when I, you know, when it's in Los Angeles uh, and popular among the Hollywood crowd, I said, you know what? This ain't no joke, people. This is the real deal. These people are sick. So stay close to Jesus. Is there anything that's not too evil in this world for the wicked? I think not. 
I think not. And they hate those that try to be righteous. And the only righteous thing in me is Christ. I have no righteousness in and of myself. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious name, amen.